Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and I'm back at it again. Would you believe? <laughs> okay, so uh, this is how it's going to work. Most of my videos are going to be uploaded to a Google Drive and uh, I'll be posting a link to these in a comment section on my YouTube channel. So in order to see the video, <clears throat> you'll have to go to the discussion section, look for the new comment, and in that comment, you'll find the link. And the reason for that is that I'm not going to take a chance uh, uploading any more videos to YouTube and having them deleted or removing or removed because some idiot thinks they're inappropriate. Okay, so um, I'm going to be following that root. So now, uh, in this particular video, I'd like to revise what I said in the last video um, and try to make it a little clearer because apparently the smart mainstream academics are still struggling to get it. <laughs> All right, so let's begin. Now, uh, you'll recall that I told you this equation here is true and you could replace dy dx by f prime of x, which means uh, the first derivative of x. So uh, it doesn't really matter whether you put dy dx or this green value here. And I've color coded them so that you can know it's the same. So this equation here is really the same as this one with this, the derivative as a subject. Now, when you simplify the slope function, which is the one in red, you will get both the derivative and the difference in the slopes. So you will get the difference in the red secant line slope and also in the difference, the difference between the green and the red secant line slopes. And that's given by this Q of XH expression, okay? So, and we know what both expressions are because when we simplify this, we will have the derivative, which is an expression only in x. It has no h anymore in it, and this, the difference will be an expression with terms that have at least one h in, in them. The terms can have x in them too, but they'll all have h in those terms, and that's how you know that this q of x h is the difference in slopes, okay? So now, that's all it is. And in your bogus calculus, what you do is you have this definition here with a limit, which means that as you get closer and closer to this here, boom, uh, you, you have no way to calculate the derivative at that point because the finite difference, this finite difference, isn't defined at the point of tangency, okay? So as you'll see here, I've color-coded them. This, uh, the difference is this blue, which is... This blue angle is the difference between the red and the green. Uh, the red is the slope of the secant line. The green is the slope of the tangent line, okay, which is 3 because it's the point of tangency is at x equals to 1. So if I put the grid on, you'll be able to see it. Um, here's a grid, see? So it is at 1, all right? I'm going to remove the grid. And uh, it's actually that simple. So <clears throat> this particular equation here was found after I discovered the new calculus, okay? And this doesn't work like the new calculus because in the new calculus, this difference here is always zero. Why? Because in the new calculus, the secant line here is, not, is never non-parallel. It's always parallel to this green line. So let's look at the new calculus, see? So the, the secant line is always parallel to the green line. And as you can see, uh, Q of X, M, N is always zero, which is the difference in slopes. Obviously, the difference in the slope of a parallel secant line and the tangent line is always going to be zero, right? And as you can see, the derivative in the new calculus is always correct, no matter where you are and how you calculate it. And of course, all the terms in M and N will be zero. Uh, in the new calculus. This is not true in your bogus calculus because this here can never be zero because if the difference is zero, then your finite difference equation 
this this guy down here this year is undefined okay it'll be undefined right so it doesn't matter that you're seeing this here this is just a a, a problem with GeoGebra. but if you get to zero here like that this uh, this uh, term here is this particular term here is undefined okay because you don't have a finite difference at the point of tangency so i've been trying to explain this uh to the incorrigibly stupid morons on Psi dot math, okay? So this poor idiot here, this guy's first name here is Franz. So he says, so I told him, are you trying to tell me that you think this here is not true? And he says, this is not even a statement, Dumbo. <laughs> well, the poor guy doesn't realize that it's an equation and it's definitely true, okay? And so, uh, and he also had problems realizing that f prime of x is the same as dy dx. And so in any case, uh, the skinny of it all is that this here is an equation and it's true or valid. There is no debate over this. This is shown by the geometry in here, okay? See, this is proved by the geometry. So if this is the tangent line, then obviously it's just going to have a difference in the angle with the slope, right? It's always going to have a difference. And that difference is given by Q of XH. So that's pretty much it. I wanted to revise that to make it clear and to show you that this here is a bogus formulation, right? In other words, you, you cannot, in order for this to be true, this difference here has to be zero and it can never be zero. And it doesn't matter that you have uh, a whole theory of limits with epsilons and deltas and all that nonsense, it's all flawed because there is no such thing as a real number. Okay, so you may ask, well, how do we know that all these points are defined? Well, they're defined as distances, which we call magnitudes, okay, along the x-axis. And not all of those distances can be measured. For example, if we're at 3.14 approximately here, then pi is approximately here, right? But it has no measure, okay? So there is no such thing as a real number line. It's, it's total nonsense. You cannot construct a number line unless you're able to reify a point. There is a rational number line because you can actually calibrate uh, such a line, but you cannot calibrate a real number line because there is no such thing as a name for all the real numbers. So you may have heard of Cantor's diagonal argument. It's a bunch of crap, but the reason that it's a bunch of crap is that there is no such thing as a real number. So Cantor said that uh, the imaginary set, well, it is imaginary, but he didn't think it was. The set of real numbers is uncountable. And he was dead right that it's uncountable, but not for the reasons the poor delusional idiot thought. The reason you can't count such a set is because it doesn't exist. Its members cannot be listed. Do you understand that? That's what it means for a set to be countable, you morons. It means that. Uh, its members can be indexed, and you can't index them unless you know what they are. Do you get it? Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'd like to end it off by saying that I tried to explain this to several mathematics professors, but they're all absolute idiots, and they can't see it, and it's truly unfortunate because um, I'm sharing this new knowledge with you and I didn't have to share it with you. But anyway, so I'm going to leave you with that. And next time I post a new video, it will also be uh, in the same format. Format. I'll, again, write a comment in my YouTube discussion section, and the link will be there. So I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, my friends, goodbye.